What does the word dreamer mean? Well, according to Merriam-Webster, it's a noun. A noun meaning one that dreams. It's quite simple, right? A simple noun with a simple meaning. But it's much more than a noun. It's an identity. People with DACA associate with the word dreamer. DACA is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, a program established by President Barack Obama in 2012. And it granted protection from deportation for thousands of people. It also provided them with a social security number and a work permit. These two tools opened doors for them. It allowed them to strive for a better education and also allowed them to work and overall have a better life. What does the dreamer look like? Well, it can be anyone you see. It can be the person sitting next to you. It can be your student. It can be a teacher. It can be the guy waiting at the bus stop. It can be anyone you see. There's no set skin color. There's no set ethnicity. Anyone can dream. Take me for example. I'm 18 years old. I'm a high school senior and I'll be attending the University of San Francisco later this fall. I partake in AP classes. I'm trying to learn French. Keyword is trying. <laughs> I'm a link crew leader. I welcome in new faces and new individuals into the Mariner community with open hearts and minds. I show them around campus and I show them what it's like to be a Mariner. I'm also part of the cross country and track and field team. I find running fun. <laughs> it's a hobby of mine. <laughs> Outside of school, I volunteer every summer. I go to my old elementary school and tutor little kids in Spanish, English, and mathematics. I'm a son and I'm a brother. I'm best friends with a guy I met my freshman year and his name is Arjun. I'm in a loving and caring relationship with an amazing girl named Brianna. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing, I'm a dreamer. I'm one of those 11 million people dreaming. Many of you have seen me around in a shirt or seen me around running, but did any of you think a hardworking individual, a student involved in this community to be a dreamer? Probably not. That's why I'm here today to show you what immigrants are like and what are, what are we to put a picture what we can be. At the age of six, I left Mexico. And by doing so, I left my home. I left my toys. I left my school. I left my friends. I left my family members. I left everything behind and came here to America. I've been living here for over 10 years. Everything I know is America. I was shaped here. I was made into the man I am today here. All my loved ones and all my memories are here. Everyone that sees me or has met me, they think I'm an American. I myself, I think I'm an American. But to political figures and to the Department of Homeland Security, I'm not an American. I'm just an illegal alien without paperwork. And on November 18, no, November 8, my bad, 2016, people began to live in fear. A fear that maybe one day they'll have to say goodbye to the loved ones. A fear of starting over. A fear of losing those they care most about. For me, a fear maybe not going to French and seeing Miss Shorter and saying bonjour to her. A fear not be able to sing along with Ethan all the songs we've learned in French. <laughs> I fear not being able to run for Coach Enrique. I fear saying goodbye to a family that brought me in my freshman year. A family that taught me to run the extra mile. A family that taught me to push myself to my limits. A family that has made me a better person. A family held together by Coach Enrique. I fear not being able to say hi to Ms. McGowan or all the parents I welcome. I fear not saying good, good evening and welcome to Moreau Catholic. 
I fear this. I fear not able to go to San Francisco with Arjun. I fear not being able to wake up on a Saturday morning and take Bart with him and explore the city. I fear saying goodbye to my best friend. I fear not being able to hug and squeeze Brianna. I fear that I won't be able to share the drives we share anymore. I fear that maybe one day we won't be able to sing along to our favorite songs or make pancakes together no more. I fear having to say goodbye to someone I love and care so much about. I fear having to say goodbye to so many people I've met. I fear starting over again. And it's just not me. It's 11 million people living in fear every single day. Every single day since November 8, people are living in fear. And on July 31st, 2017, that fear struck home. As that prior morning, ICE officials raided my neighborhood and took into custody two adult males, two adult males that had a job, two adult males that had a family they came home to every night, two adult males that had everything to lose, and two adult males that lost everything that early morning. I hear about this in the news. I hear about it across states, across cities. But never did I imagine that it would happen across the street from where I live. I'm just 18 years old, and I'm stressed about having to say goodbye. I'm not just stressed about college placement at Sam's, or where to go out with our June and Brianna, or what time I'm going to run in the mile. But I'm stressed about having to say goodbye. I'm stressed about having to start over once again. And it's not just me. It's 11, 11, 11 million people also stressed. On September 5th, 2017, the fear struck even deeper, and our future was left uncertain. As DACA was taken out, the lifeline of thousands of people was cut, a lifeline that allowed us to go to college, a lifeline that allowed us to get a job and finally own a home one day was cut. It left us with an uncertain future, and we were afraid. So you may be wondering, why am I sharing my story with you? Why is it important? Why should you listen? Well, I'm done living in fear. People need to hear my story. People need to know what an immigrant looks like. People need to know the fears we go through every single day. People need to know that the immigration system is broken. The current system is sending back refugees, refugees from war-torn countries and gain-run countries back. They're all crying for help, and we're sending them back. We, a country that was founded by immigrants, turned it back away on them. It's separating families. It's separating loved ones from one another. Immigrants made this country great previous decades, but now they're being turned away. And it's not right. The current system is expensive. For me personally, I spent thousands of dollars going through the process itself. The system is confusing. There are multiple applications one may fill, multiple boxes one may check. And lastly, and most important, it's a never-ending cycle. There's no set date where you hear back. The current system just knows how to say, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you in four to six months. We'll get back to you in six to eight months. There's no set date where people can get a solution or an answer. People are waiting years and years for a solution. The current system is not given solutions but rather it's prolonging our fears and it's prolonging an uncertain future for us. And it's not right. For me, people need, a, people need an answer. It needs to be fixed. So this is where my idea takes place. It starts with education. The government needs to educate 
the community and those going through the system. The current system has so many applications one person might fill. Many check boxes that they may check. One wrong mark, an ice officials might be knocking on your door. It's a sensitive topic. People can lose everything with the wrong mark. Second, it has to be affordable. Many of us are young college students that can't afford to go through the process. We can't afford even going to college at times. We don't, we don't qualify for federal loans. Well, you might be asking, you attend Moreau Catholic, a private institution. What do you know about not having money? Well, my family is a working poor class family. The only reason I'm able to stand here before you guys and share my story is because Moreau has given me and my family so much financial aid and I'm forever grateful and forever in debt to them. But college is different. College is bigger. College has more people and it lacks the resources. Without DACA, many people will lose their jobs. And without the job, they don't have an income. And without an income, they don't have money. And no money means no application. No application means no citizenship. No citizenship means people are still living in fear. Fear that they'll have to say goodbye one day. And lastly, there has to be more clearer ways of obtaining a citizenship. Right now, all systems are always tied back to a, being related to another citizen. They expect 11 million people to be linked to a citizen. It makes it impossible for new immigrant families to come in and live the American dream. But I do know three things that all 11 million people can fit into. I know all of us are pursuing a higher education. I know all of us are hardworking individuals that no matter what, will show up to work the next day. I know we all love to spend hours of our time giving back to our community. That is the American standard. That's what parents preach to their kids. Their kids, they preach that their kids should go off to college one day and obtain a college degree. And once they do, they should join the workforce. And all while, they're giving back to the community. So why can't 11 million people that are doing this every single day obtain a clear path to citizenship? What makes us so different? Is it that we're worth less than everyone else? Is it that we're gonna get defined by a piece of paper or are we defined by our character? What makes us so different from everyone else? Are we always meant to live in fear? Well, what is it? So what if 11 million people can obtain citizenship, a clear path to citizenship? What that means, those who pursue the higher education can finally join the workforce and create solutions to those problems our society faces today. All those hardworking families can finally dream of owning a home, an own home that they can rest and know they can come home to every night. All those people that love spending hours of the time giving back to the community, they can finally spread the love across the United States. They can finally travel. They can finally live a normal life. 11 million people can live a normal day life. For me, that life includes going to school. That includes running for Coach Enrique, the last few races I may have of the season. That includes welcoming parents into the Mariner community. That includes me attending the University of San Francisco and walking on graduation day one day. That includes me going out to San Francisco with Arjun and knowing I'll come home. That includes me able to hug and squeeze Brianna. That includes a life without fear, a life that I know I can be an American. So I ask you, I ask you to support us. 
support programs such as DACA, join nonprofits that provide resources to programs such as DACA. I ask you to believe in us. Believe that we're here to create a better community. Believe that not, we're not here to cause harm, but rather live amongst you. I ask you to vote. A vote means your voice can be heard. Your voices are strong. Your voices can create change. A single vote can change a lot. Lastly, I ask you to allow us to dream. A dream where we can all know we are an American. A dream that we aren't living in fear every single day. Thank you.